Distinguished guests and friends here and all over the world, it is a great, great joy. I welcome all of you to this inauguration of the Hope Cathedral. We are gathered to celebrate a room which gives people of all faiths a space for reflection and new dedication to participate in the struggle for God's creation. As a common humanity, we are daily contributed to, contributing to the destruction of our climate and our habitat. The energy in this rebellion against the mission God has given to all of us will have to be transferred to energy for building a sustainable future for all people and the whole of creation. The Hope Cathedral sends the message that another future for the ocean and for our planet is possible. Change is possible when we work together and use our God-given creativity to do that. The Hope Cathedral shows us that even plastic in the ocean can be transferred to shape a room where dreams are made into action. May this space be a source of hope and commitment to energize our participation in the pilgrimage of justice, peace, and integrity of creation. We need that, all of us. Kjære alle sammen. For tre år siden var jeg så heldig å bli spurt om å være høy beskytter for Håpets katedral. Det var en stor glede for mig å takke ja til denne oppgaven, og det har gitt mig god mulighet til å følge dette vakre og viktige prosjektet. Håpets katedral har vært drevet av et stort engasjement. Sontverkere, de frivillige plastrydderne, kirka og alle ildsjelene som har drevet arbeidet fremover. Og i dag står vi her med en himmel av håp over oss. Tenk at noe så vakkert kan skapes ut av noe som er så problematisk som plast i havet. Håpets katedral er et symbol på noe jeg tror vi alle trenger å bli minnet om. At vi som bor på denne kloden hører på et forunderlig, men naturlig vis sammen. Havet forener oss, og havets helse og våre egne livsvilkår henger sammen. Som mennesker så har vi et spesielt ansvar for å leve i respekt for alt levende. For naturen, dyrelivet, både på landjorda og i havet. Og dette for alt ansvaret er en viktig del av alle religioner. Og det er en viktig del av det å være menneske. Det finnes bare to flere religiøse grønne kapell i verden. Det første er i Vatikanet, og det andre er her på Isegran. 
Og når vi går in i Håpets katedral, forankres vi i oss selv og blir minnet om hvor vi kommer fra og vad som er vår felles oppgave her på jorda. Og derfor er Håpets katedral et dypt eksistensielt sted. Jeg håper at katedralen vil bli til glede, håp og inspiration for mange, både her i lokalmiljøet, i Norge og ute i verden. Derfor er det en stor glede for mig å erklære Håpets katedral for å åpne. Gratulerer med dagen alle sammen. Hi everyone and salam alaikum. In Islam and as a Muslim, we have a shared responsibility to take care of the planet that we live on. And that means that amongst other things, preserving, caring for and cultivating all the good that has been given to us by our Creator and the trust that our Creator has given us with this during the time that we have here. And that we need to take care of the trust for both this generation and the generation that may come after us. And this applies not only to humanity, but to all living creatures on earth. Several places in both the Quran and the Hadith, we can find mentions of the environment and the responsibility we have in relation to the environment we live in. I can mention, amongst other things, a Hadith from the Prophet, peace be upon him. He said, there is none amongst the Muslims who plants a tree or sows seeds, and then a bird or a person or an animal eats from it, but is regarded as a charitable gift for him. And then it remains for us to see if we can help create the conditions for a seed that we sow to have the environment. It needs to be able to become a tree that one day may become a place where a bird or a person or an animal may find shade, rest or food. I'll do what I can and I hope you will too. Thank you. Nåde og fred, og gratulerer med dagen. We would like to present our thanks to the artist Sarah Wilson and the British Museum for lending us this beautiful cope, which truly gives a festive aura to this inauguration, although it is made of plastic found in the River Thames. It is a token of community in a time when we cannot travel, and it is a sign of the change we are hoping for both for the environment and for our lives. Today, World Environment Day 2021 is perfect for the inauguration of the Hope Cathedral. And I'm honored to be part of this celebration. More than ever, we need a faithful sustainability legitimated and mobilized by our faith, our deepest values. Our different religious traditions have a great potential working together to love, respect and protect the creation. The Hope Cathedral has been able to combine work on sustainability with an effort to strengthen the fellowship in the local community and in the civil society, also through interfaith dialogue. A great achievement. Here I'm asked to represent a Christian Lutheran perspective. I will emphasize two things that might definitely not be exclusively Lutheran. God's endless grace is expressed in incredible ways through the beauty, abundance, and variety of the creation. To many Norwegians, nature is our main cathedral. Let us respect and care for nature as we respect and care for our holy rooms. All creation itself takes part in the worship of God, creator of heaven and earth. The triune God is present and acting everywhere through the life-giving Holy Spirit. Let us listen to nature's praise and join in the choir. Peace and grace be with you all. Bön för hopets katedral. La oss i all vår forskjellighet forenes i ett mål. La oss be for at livet på kloden opprettholdes og bevares. La oss oppdage og se at de tankesystemer vi benytter oss av ikke tjener livets hensikt lengre. La vår oppmerksomhet gå mot ny innsikt 
ny förståelse av livets sammanhang. Låt det bli till en handling i oss som medmänniskor, vårt samfund, så också i det globala samfund. Låt oss börja med det enkla, för vi ger oss på det sammansatte och komplexa som livet utgör. Låt oss börja med hoppets katedral som vi är samlat om här och nu. Shaman sang över vidne, över vannene, över allt den samma kraft. Fra skogene, fra fjellene, over alt den samme kraft. I universet, i solen, over alt den samme kraft. I menneskene, i kulturene, over alt den samme kraft. I samfunnene, i religionene, over alt den samme kraft. Du verden menneske får en mulighet i denne kraft. I moder jord, menneskeheten og kjærlighetens ånd er håpets katedral bekreftet med denne tromming. to thank you for giving me the opportunity to stand in front of all of you here today and represent Hinduism in the cause of nature. Before it evolved over time to become the religion as we know it today, Hinduism was a natural religion. People then prayed to nature such as the sun, the rain, the mountains, the rivers and the sea that provided life, shelter, food and protection. Although our religion has evolved since then, nature is still central to Hinduism. The only difference now is that nature has taken on the form of a god. At the same time, Hinduism is not least a pantheistic religion where the belief that the deity is present in everything and everyone is central. In our prayers, flowers, fruit, water and more are sacrificed to the gods in thanks to nature's munificence. The core of Hinduism is charity, including, not least, love of nature. Ideally, one should avoid eating animals and rather take care of them and make sure that they are well. You should also only use what you need of plants, fruits and vegetables and not take more than what is necessary. In that way, no life suffers for us. It is really we humans who are dependent on nature to live. Nature manages just fine without us. Therefore, we are the ones who must be grateful to nature and not destroy it. We have already been greedy and careless and have taken it to extremes. And it is the consequences of this that are now impacting on us. The least we can do is look back and correct the mistakes we have made so far. There's just one thing I want to say before I finish. Our Earth is incredibly beautiful, and there's so much of it that we still have not seen. So let us take care of the Earth so that future generations also have the opportunity to see how beautiful our planet is and experience the wonders of nature. Inbame surha ellorum barha, which is Tamil and means everyone must live with eternal joy. Thank you. Uh, good afternoon, my name is Ajahn Kalyano. I'm a forest monk living a very simple meditative life in the forest in Norway. In Buddhism, we believe that nature can teach us. Many Norwegians have also said to me that their time in nature is almost a spiritual experience. 
I don't know what they mean with almost, but we believe that through contact with nature, we can develop spiritual qualities in the mind and become wise, leading us to spiritual enlightenment, where our mind enters into a very stable, natural state. For this reason, Buddhism is full of practices to help us connect more with nature and develop these spiritual qualities to the full. In nature, as maybe we all know, the mind can become very calm, peaceful, humble, and grateful for all that nature gives us. We can naturally develop love and respect and feel inspired to help nature. It is great for us to see this Hope Cathedral project, which is also out to inspire, creating this beautiful symbol of hope and turning something bad into something good. Thank you. I'm Elizabeth Golding from the Catholic Church. These days, it is six years since Pope Francis published his circular, Laudato Si, in which he asked all world leaders and people of goodwill to take care of the earth. I wish we all had listened better. The Pope, who is the head of our church, is very concerned about the environmental challenges we face. He chose his name Francis after Francis of Assisi, when he became Pope, because he was so concerned with social justice and nature. Laudato Si shows that faith and science are not opposites, but complement each other. The core of creation is man's relationship to God, our neighbor, and nature. We learn that the earth and everything that lives here is sacred. How can we, for example, say grace before meals, and then throw away the food that remains? Many Catholics live in poor parts of the world where they are also hard hit due to climate change. We have a duty to engage and share in our abundance. Between eight and 900 million people are starving today, and the number is increasing. As the Pope says, the whole world must stand together and take care of our common home, and we must act now. We must oppose unbridled economic liberalism. We must cultivate and take care of the earth, not submit to everything and everyone. We have a moral obligation to protect children, grandchildren, and the most vulnerable among us. It is urgent to make a real climate lift. We cannot leave it to a few. We must all work for the authorities to properly address the climate challenges, even if it costs, as we also have an individual responsibility to embrace this challenge together. Rebuilding our economy after the pandemic gives us a great opportunity to create a better future for the environment. As the Pope says, God always forgives. We forgive sometimes, but nature never forgives. Thank you. Our sacred book, Guru Granth Sahib Ji, is summarized with number one. One which is present in everyone in people, in plants, in animals, in ocean, in nature. The concept of Hope Cathedral is same. The ocean belongs to us all, and so does the hope. Hope Cathedral is a symbol of hope. Hope to think above the differences of age, gender, nationality, and religion. As a Sikh, I believe in same, equality and oneness in all. That's why Hope Cathedral is an inspiring project for us Sikhs. It's about converting waste into good. In Sikh faith, we emphasize on working on five weaknesses, ego, anger, 
lust, greed, and attachment. As a Sikh, I should recognize my weaknesses and make efforts to conquer them through selfless service. I can transform my weaknesses into my strengths. Ego, anger, greed, lust, attachment can be converted to love, truth, compassion, contentment, and humility. In Frederikstad, in Norway, people work voluntary for Hope's Cathedral. For me, this is exactly how we define seva, selfless service. Plastic from ocean is reformed into this beautiful plastic painting covering the whole ceiling of this cathedral. I interpret this as people working together consciously to convert weaknesses into strengths thus bringing us all together to become one and not two, as we all are connected. Thank you. project and this process would never have become so strong and resilient without the contribution of the volunteers. Nearly 10,000 hours of labor is melted into this Hope Cathedral. As a strong symbol of what we can achieve when we collaborate, artist and inventor Erik Alfred has together with volunteers created a wreath of hope in our uh, in the cathedral here uh, out of oak branches from the beloved oak tree in the cathedral park of Fredrikstad. The tree has been restored and we have reused the branches. There are seven pieces from the oak strongly connected into a circle and there are also seven religions represented here today, and there are seven days a week. Our vision is that the breath of hope will strengthen the importance and the possibilities which exist in this cathedral by its beauty and strong construction. Let us continue to work together to fill this room with an interfaith program seven days a week and let us be creative together so that we can solve
the massive problems of marine pollution. The hope and the ocean belong to us all. And now uh, let the wreath be raised by the volunteer team. Good luck. When Solveig asked me to become the governor of the Hope Cathedral, I imagined sailing the seven seas. Then came Corona, and I guess I was wrong. But especially today, we see the importance of the oceans that keep us together, across borders, regardless of race and religions. Working together is crucial for our survival. On Earth, many living beings, both at land and at sea, have to coexist. Yet, as humans, we have the most important job. We are the keepers who borrow the planet we call Mother Earth. She has been here for billions of years, and she is going to be here long after we are gone. The choices we make, she must carry. To me, the Hope Cathedral is what we achieve when we make choices. It is a proof that working together and making an effort show results and how important social communities are. We have taken plastic from the sea and turned it into something beautiful. And we exper experience that negativity is turned into positivity and hope. As a godmother, I am looking forward to follow the Hope Cathedral further on its journey. Maybe it will sail on the seven seas or to Gothenburg. Either way, I am ready. It took a sick whale to wake up Norway. A whale sick of our plastic, so sick that it had to die. This was a wake-up call for Norway, and now we see a momentum in fighting plastic pollution that we never have before. Previously this week, over 80 nations and over government, 80 governments called for negotiations to start a new legally binding treaty to stop plastic pollution. This is an important step in the right direction, and I honestly hope and I do believe we will solve this together. But what will be the way for climate change, for biodiversity loss? These threats are not as visual as 30 plastic bale in a whale's stomach. And maybe the solutions are more controversial, and it will take time. But that is time we don't have. Nature is our life support system, from the fresh air we breathe to the clean water we drink. Nature provides the essential we all rely on for our survival. And it also holds key to our prosperity, with millions of lives, live, with millions of livelihoods dependent on nature. We know that we are losing nature much faster than we can restore it itself. And without urgent action, significant harm to people and the planet will happen. But over the next month, we have an incredible opportunity to make an ambitious goal, global commitment to the restore the nature, a new deal for planet and people. And every one of us can help make this happen. Today is the World Environment Day. And today the whole world focuses on the need for restoration of our nature. And it's also the start of the UN Decade on Ecosystem rest Restoration, which aims to prevent, halt, and reverse the degradation of ecosystems on every continent and in every ocean. This is urgently needed because most of our nature is not protected. The currency in my line of work is hope. Hope based on science and hope based on engagement. The young people in Generation Restoration are part of that engagement and we want to be their partner in hope. The cathedral we open today is a beacon of hope to find the solutions we need for a healthy ocean and without plastic. And not at least that we find these solutions together. Thank you. What we are witnessing today is surreal. It is like a dream come true. Humanity is waking up today, thanks to the Church of Norway and the dozens of creative and committed volunteers 
who have been working for months on this exceptional project. In this World Environment Day, where we emphasize the importance to restore nature, we are seeing it here in Norway, being manifested by Hope Cathedral, that brings hope that there are solutions and hope that there are people who care presenting the intrinsic linkages between people and the planet. Nature is in crisis, threatened by biodiversity and habitat loss, global heating and waste pollution. Humanity needs solidarity between peoples of all religions and backgrounds to live in peace and in harmony. And the Hope Cathedral is doing just that. Humanity is at its best. Humanity depends on action now for a resilient and sustainable future. All religions and beliefs are committed to live in harmony with nature, stewarding all living things as gifts from God, or deeming rights of other creations as equal to those of humanity. The Christian Bible says about nature, let the fields be jubilant and everything in them, let all the trees of the forest sing for joy. In the Islamic Quran, devote thyself single-mindedly to the faith and thus follow the nature designed by God, the nature according to which he has fashioned mankind. There is no altering the creation of God. And the Old Testament, Isaac sowed in that land and reaped a hundredfold the same year. The Lord blessed him. Restoring nature is not only a moral responsibility, but it is also a spiritual obligation. The Hope Cathedral is an excellent example of UNEP's Faith for Earth vision to achieve a world where everything is in balance. By engaging faith communities to collaborate and in integrating faith values in environmental decision making, to provide the scientific evidence to maximize their sacred messages, and to work on draining faith on assets. The Hope Cathedral is the best that greening houses of worship can be. Religious institutions can start at home, and this is what we are seeing here, practicing what we preach, and its best manifestation. The hundreds of millions of houses of worship across the globe need to follow suit and be minarets for sustainability and coexistence. Thank you for this wonderful hope you are offering humanity today. What is your sound? What is your history? Where is your voice? It is a mystery. So tell us now. Tell us now. So tell us, please. tell us, please. What is your sound? You know we want to hear. We see the colors dancing in the street. We see the children dancing to the beat. I know you feel it. I know you hear it. And come and join us. We won't believe you. Go up and down. Go around and around. Listen to the noise, listen to the sound Dance like nobody's watching Dance like it's just us around, hey! That dreams come true You only have to believe in you Be a rainbow on someone's cloud Spread joy, make, make it loud. loud And if you're with us now, come on